G'day, I'm Mark from Tasmanian Off-Road Adventures. In this video, it's just a really quick video on how I hard mounted my ARB air compressor in my Ford Ranger. Now there is a little bit of a backstory to this because the ARB compressor that I now have in there is not the original one that I fitted. I actually fitted a Thumper Max compressor that I had from one of my old air compressor tests. I put that in there. And short story, without going into it too much, it died. Uh, so I've now tossed it and uh, after doing that monster, well a couple of monster air compressor tests now, I went out and bought the ARB single compressor and that's what I've mounted in here now. So once I chose to go with the ARB compressor, I went down to AR ARB and I was just going to buy the, the loose one, you know, ready for the lockers that, you know, just the actual compressor itself. And then Woody, uh, who's the manager down there at ARB Launceston, uh, pointed out to me that I was better off buying the this one, the portable compressor, uh, because it's already got the wiring loom in it and it's already got the pressure switch uh, and it's basically ready to go, uh, comes with all the hose and everything. So all I had to do was I purchased that, there's four rivets that hold the compressor into this box, drilled out the rivets, rivets took the compressor out, the box is sitting in the shed, it'll come in handy for something one day. Uh, and then it was all ready to do, all I've literally done is drill those rivets out, and in place put four stainless steel bolts, bolted it inside the box through the guard, and voila, I'm ready to go. So I'll just show you that now. I've got open that up. It's gonna be a bit hard to see, so I won't go into too many details, but it's an ARB compressor. Keep all my, compre uh, my hose and fittings and gun and gauge and everything in this bag. It's really easy to, to handle when it's all together like that. Put that down there. The only other thing I've done is I took off the alligator clips on the end and I've put on uh, this 50 amp Anderson plug. Now you're not going to be able to see it and I'm not going to bother showing you because it's not that exciting. But I've installed an Anderson plug around where my trailer plug is um, for two reasons. One is to hook up the camper trailer to charge the battery in that when I use that. The other one is to use this for the compressor that is. So all I need to do is drag this around here. plug it into my 50 amp Anderson plug and if I turn that on I get my compressor all fired up. Now I'm just going to actually unplug that in case it comes on again. So that's all very straightforward. Now um, reasons as you'd why you'd hard mount it because uh, it's just quicker and it's easier. Uh, when I've done the compressor tests uh, I test how long compressors take to pump up tyres but then someone commented and pointed out but you know, if you take it out of the bag and then you've got to pack it up again, you're adding a couple of minutes onto the test, so which is a very valid point. But it's just easy and convenient, and I just like it. I like the fact that I can just unplug it, well, not unplug it, open the door, plug it into the Anderson plug, pump them up, unplug it, then I'm done. No packing away into a bag. Compressors can get pretty hot as well, so I don't have to touch the compressor. Aside from turning the switch on and off, I just don't have to touch it, so there's no risk of burning my hands and fingers and all that sort of thing. So lots of positives uh, for hard mounting a compressor, but there's a little bit of thought uh, and effort that has to go into it as far as wiring goes, and I'm gonna give you a rundown on that in just a moment. So what do you need to do? What do you need to calculate out and what sort of effort do you need to put in to run a cable from the battery? Now I'm pointing up there because my I'm coming off my starting battery. The reason I'm coming off the starting battery is I can leave the ignition running, the alternator charges the battery, so when my compressor here is drawing the 25 amps or whatever it's drawing, the compressor is putting that uh, amount of amps back into the battery. So I'm not going to flatten my starting battery. Uh, you could potentially ride up to the second battery, but there's no real benefit to that because uh, it's just not. It's, you're better off running it off the starting battery. As I said, then you eliminate the risk of, of running that battery flat. Now the most important thing you need to do is fuse the cable. So I'm not going to show you the wiring under the bonnet because it's kind of hidden away and you can't really see it anyway. But you need to fuse it. Even though there's a fuse on the ARB compressor here, I'm still fusing as close to the battery as I can. So if something goes wrong on that cable between the battery and the compressor, I'm protected. Or well, the wiring's protected and the vehicle's protected. So what I'm using is a MIDI fuse. So I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see that, but that's called a MIDI fuse. M-I-D-I -I, MIDI fuse and it fits in a holder like that. My mate, Jamie Hazelden, who owns Jamie's Touring Solutions, which used to be Jamie's 12 volt shop, he put me onto these. But these are a really, really 
essential item if you're running dual battery systems and stuff like that and putting a compressor into a car. So the ARB compressor pulls somewhere around 23 amps. Uh, I've got a 40 amp fuse up there. It does have its own fuse here. Actually, I'm gonna, I've totally forgotten what that is, so I'm just gonna check. That's a 40 amp fuse as well. So I've got two 40 amp fuses. As I said, if something was to go wrong with the wiring, between the battery and here, I'm fully protected. So that's the first thing, make sure you get your fusing right. You, number one, use a fuse. Number two, get the fuse right. Now, second thing, this is really critical, is cable size. So I see on uh, Facebook groups and that sort of thing, quite often people say, how big a cable do I run to my compressor? Now, it really depends on a few things. One is how long the run is, uh, and secondly, how many amps your compressor uses. So the ARB is somewhere around 23 amps, give or take. As I said before, I originally put in a Thumper Max, and that pulls about 90 odd amps. So I calculated that out, and I end up running uh, two uh, AWG, which is the gauge of wire, which is really thick cable, which I just, so I'm gonna show you how thick it is. But because I was pulling 100 amps over about six meters, and I did a calculation and worked out on voltage drop, how big a cable I needed, and it's, it's pretty big, it's a pretty big cable. Now, that's 90 amps, I'm only pulling 23 now. If I had to put the ARB in originally, I wouldn't ha have had to use big cable like that, I could have got away with smaller cable. Now, there are calculators to work that out yourself. So, as I said, take the main run, or long run, your acceptable voltage drop. So my acceptable voltage drop in my mind is about 10%. So if I'm at 13.8 with the alternator charging the battery, take off 1.38 volts, and I'm still somewhere around 12 and a half, give or take. Pretty happy with that, and that compressor will run fine on that. You can use a smaller percentage for your acceptable voltage drop, but with a compressor, that's fine. If you, it was a fridge or something like that, which you're pretty particular about keeping the voltage up, you'd use a smaller percentage. As I said, I used a calculator to work it all out, but there is something easy to do, which I highly recommend, and that is there's a chart uh, made by Enerdrive. It's on their website. I'll put a link to it. But basically, uh, up the top of the chart, it's how many amps you're drawing. Down the left-hand side of the chart is what your run is, and also to what your acceptable drop is, either 10% or 3% are the two options. Use that and it will tell you what size cable you need. So I can't remember now, I did check the the, um, the the chart when I was redoing the ARB and I think it was four or maybe six AWG. It doesn't matter too much because I'd already run the two AWG. So on my, my um, uh, voltage drop and the size of the cable is absolutely well and truly uh, over and above what is required for the ARB compressor. A couple of other tips is when measuring the distance for your cable run, you need to measure your positive and negative runs. So if you're running a positive and negative cable from the front to the back, and this one's about, let's call it four meters, so the total length of cable is eight meters. Now, you can cut that down a bit by earthing through the chassis. So at the front, I'm only running a positive cable all the way down. Uh, I've run a, or there's already a, a negative cable off the battery to the chassis, and then back here at my Anderson plug, I've come out of the, the negative cable out of the Anderson plug to the chassis. Now, I haven't just scraped off a bit of uh, a bit of paint and put a self-driving screw through. It's actually a bolt uh, that goes into a bolt, um, a nut that's welded to the chassis. So there's a real good, firm, uh, good connection there. And by doing that, I can eliminate that chassis as part of my run. So let's call it half a metre at the front, half a metre at the back, four metres there. So my cable run is actually only five metres, not eight. The other important thing to remember is just your Anderson plug. Uh, I had a 120 amp plug on for the Thumper Max, uh, which is fine. What I do find, I have run the Thumper Max through a 50 amp Anderson plug and it does get a bit warm and I was a bit worried about it. Last thing I want to do is be stuck on the west coast in the middle of nowhere and have an Anderson plug melt on me. Uh, so when I put the Thumper Max in, I put the 120 amp uh, Anderson plug on. It gives you an idea of the physical size of it. it it's, it's actually huge. Um, and it's a bit hard to work with, a bit hard to get the cable in and even to click it in is a bit difficult. So when I went to the ARB, uh, I went back to the 50 amp Anderson plug, which as I've stated before, is more than enough for this ARB compressor. 
So in a nutshell, if you do use that Enerdrive chart, you can't go wrong. Now, what happens if you do get it wrong? A few things. There's this thing called Ohm's Law, and I'm gonna, just gonna give you a real, real basic rundown on Ohm's Law, and if you're interested at all, Google it, and you'll find out a lot more about it. But what Ohm's Law says is, if you have resistance, or the higher the resistance you have, the less, less voltage you'll have and the more current you'll have. So what that means is if you run a, a cable too small, you'll have resistance. You'll have voltage drop and your amp draw will actually increase. So I said the ARB is 23 amp, but if you run your cable too small and your voltage drops off, the amp draw is actually going to rise. You, then you've got the chance of blowing fuses and worse, uh, the chance of actually burning through that cable, melting it. So it can have some pretty catastrophic effects. So don't get it wrong. Follow the inner drive chart. And as I said before, you just cannot go wrong with it. So that's it in a nutshell. It's not overly, an overly technical how to install a, a compressor, but it's more just pointing out a couple of things, a bit of research that you need to do just to make sure you get it done properly because it is a really handy, really convenient thing to do. Hope this video sort of helped you a little bit, at least pointed you in the right direction to go and do a bit more research and just find out uh, how to do it on your rig. As per usual, all the regular things like subscribe uh, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.